I am Greg Tatum, and today I'm going to do a bit of a deeper dive into the Firefox profiler uh, to show, uh, mainly I want to talk about how processes and threads work together and how you can understand them whenever you're profiling. So in order to do this, I'm on the CAT Wikipedia page, and I'm going to open up DevTools in the browser. Then I'm going to close DevTools in the browser. And with that, I wanted to profile the opening and loading, opening and closing of DevTools and see what that looks like and how we can analyze it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is first I will click to start profiling and I'll open DevTools. And then I will close it and I will capture the recording by clicking here. Now, what you'll see is on the screenshots, to get oriented, uh, you can see it's just a cat page. And then, this is interesting, so boop, DevTools opens, and then the page reflows. So you can see that happens and then the header loads in DevTools, and then the web console loads. And as we wait, you can actually see the cursor blinking there. And then we close DevTools, and I'm doing the opening and closing of DevTools through shortcuts, and you can see it going away. So that's the first way to kind of get oriented in a profile is to look at the screenshots. The next is to look at the shapes of different graphs. Um, and see what we have. So we have the parent process. And I don't see any web, con web content process in there. So this is a common source of confusion when profiling is, oh, all I have is the parent process. But if I go up here to the tracks that are visible, I can actually see that I, I do have three web content processes. So I will click those to look at them. Um, now here, I don't know which is my cat content process. Um, so what I can do on Firefox Nightly is it actually lists the PID or the process ID on hover. So this is 97437, which is not listed. 97437, so I actually missed it. It's here, so I'll do that one, which is here. I know a lot about how the profiler works, but then the thing I was expecting to see wasn't there. So it took a second to think like, oh, I know this content um, process exists. Uh, let me try to find it. So that's one way that you'd go about doing it. Now this got tagged as mostly idle, which actually should, have not done that. That looks like a regression. Nice. Um, <laughs> normally, it would be it would it would be shown because it did actually paint to the screen. Um, but in this case, it didn't. But that's the process I went through to to find it. Um, and I will keep this in the video because, and I will go fix this after I'm done, so it does actually show up. Uh, but you know, even if in this case it didn't show up, sometimes. The thing that you want to look at is idle, but here you can see there's so much going on, and this is like a pretty simple profile uh, that there could be so many processes that it's, it gets overwhelming. So we try to do our best to show which uh, processes uh, to, sh to to display to to the user. Uh, now let's look at network. Network, you can see we've got kind of some load events happening here for the page and they correlate with, um, actually they, they correlate with DevTools opening, so that's in the parent process. And then in the content process, there's there's no, there's like just very little network activity. So I'm not interested particularly in that. So I will go here and here, right clicking these to hide, hide the network. Now memory is a little bit more interesting. You can see I've got, um, 16 megabytes of relative memory. And then it goes up to 62 
And then after I close DevTools, it drops back down to kind of a lower number. So let's dive into that just a little bit, just to see what's going on. So the orange is memory related in the UI. So you can see there's some orange stacks here, which is garbage collection. So this is, let's, let's zoom in to this area and you can see there's dev tools here. Well, let's see what happens. Actually, dev tools does not close there. So you, we've opened a bunch of stuff and um, memory gets allocated and then immediately gets garbage collected, which is, I don't know, that's kind of interesting. Uh, you can see here there's a GC major. So a GC major is um, garbage collection is scheduled and then it'll try to slice off work to, to do as it can. So here you can see it, there's one GC slice, two, and then more here. And they correlate with actual work being done. So even though there's like this big orange bar here that says that there's garbage collection, it's not actually garbage collection collecting the entire time. It's taking slices of work whenever things are idle and then doing that. And you can see it's doing its job. It's reducing how much memory is there. Compositor is not doing as much interesting stuff, so I will hide that. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out to the full range and look at this graph again. Now, I'm interested in this close. So here's DevTools open, and there it closes. And then what happens is a little bit later, there's a little bit more garbage collection that happened. Now, this all looks like good behavior. This is this is what the browser is doing. It's 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 loading up a tool. It um, is running some code. The code finishes initializing, and any of the kind of junk that came with it that they don't need is not eat, needed anymore goes away. Um, now let's look at, at at two more events. You can see here JavaScript's running. Actually, let's go ahead and look at it in the flame graph. So I'm going to zoom in on the load, and I can see. Let's go to this timeline. Boop opens, reflow, and then the web console appears around there. Uh, so you can see there's a lot of work happening here to initialize dev tools, which can be a bit of a um, large process. So I'm, I can click between the web content and the parent process. So I'm interested in the in the parent process. I want to make sure that's clicked. And then here, I will look at this graph. Now, normally, I would come here, and I have this 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 trick. I gotta move my video. I've got this trick I can do where I right click here, and choose drop samples with this function, and my flame graph will will get much bigger than, which these call tree transforms are pretty cool. Um, but since my video is here, I'll just <laughs> I'll I'll keep this. Uh, Kind of on the side because it's handy, but I can I can go through to see what exactly exactly is initializing. I know this is a lot of JavaScript, so I'll click over to JavaScript here, and uh, you can see unstable run with priorities is React component did mount append to local element, um, set state, render message nodes. So this is um, this is where the web console is, is rendering the existing console logs that were that were output earlier. Uh, so I can kind of get a sense of what's going on on here by looking at this and then looking at various functions like setup is, is an obvious like okay we're setting up we're setting up here but now I'm getting oriented into what's going on with the recording. I could look at this area or look at this area because there's there's two different things happening here, one up here and one up here. So I could look at the individual functions and, and get a sense. I can also go here to the call tree and invert the call stack. And what this this does to, for me is shows me where time is being spent. Now this is loading and initializing. So you can see our the uh, require hook of requiring code is actually taking a lot of time and this load function and setup and then these lazy requires are, are, there's some time here. So you see there's a self time of 72, 54, 30, 18. So these were sampled quite a bit. Um, okay, so 
let's undo and get back to kind of a clean slate here so we can see more stuff. Uh, if you notice here, I have this is grayed out because I am on JavaScript, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Go back to um, all stacks and I get that there. So let's let's look right here at the initialization step. So we've got this initial work of loading dev tools. The, and you can see here, that's where the panel opens up. And you see the moment that panel opens up, we get this kind of gigantic layout reflow, which makes sense. Let's look at the cats page. It is it is just a lot of text. So if you're opening up and resizing this page, it is going to be a lot to um, deal with. So it's it's a it's a longer layout and reflow to perform that action. So this is this is contributing significantly to the the load of the initial dev tools. But you can see what's happening is we're not doing any work here in the parent process while this layout is going on. So if I were to look at a way to optimize this, is there a way to start this kickoff, this kickoff of this work sooner? And so if I were to go in to start investigating this fix, I'd wanna know, well, what's happening over time? So now I'm gonna switch it over to the stack chart, which shows me execution based off of the sequence that it happened. I'll click that. And the first thing here is this run script. I'm gonna zoom this way since my, let me redo this. We're interested here and over, and my video is on the right. So I'll see if I can't zoom in on this area in a nice way. And I'm gonna switch to JavaScript. So here's a lazy require getter. So there's something that's being loaded here. And if I look at the script URL, it says DevTools Client Framework Toolbox.js line 682. Um, since I'm working on Gecko code, I can do this nice thing where I can look up the function name on SearchFox. Uh, it will give me that one. And honestly, no, none of those are very useful to look up although this one might be. So I'll look this function up on search box. So I can start to pick at the code and see where this is executing and, and try to understand this execution workflow. So I would look at maybe this area here on what's executing and look at, at, at find those lines of code and then look here and see what's executing and see like, can I glue these together? Can I kick them off in, um, in parallel so that I'm not waiting for this full reflow to happen? So I, I would gain, if I wanna know how much I could gain here from this specific page, this right here is 141 milliseconds because you can see up at the top that little blue number is, is measuring that. So that, that could be a nice gain um, to make the load actually go faster. Um, and actually, let's see if there's any useful markers here. I haven't looked at the markers yet. Um, I'm not seeing anything that I really care about because I'm mostly looking at the timeline here. Um, let's just do a quick scan. Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, this is perfect. Uh, there's a there's a marker called Chrome Utils Import, uh, so this is where we actually import stuff in um, in Gecko code, and so here I'm I'm interested in that. So Chrome Utils .import. If I type that in, it, it filters out everything for me, and I get a nice list of what's being loaded. So here's a Dev Tools shim. Uh, slow script debug is being loaded, uh, app constants. So perhaps there's loading information. And here's events that I'm looking at to get oriented, like what's running, why is this running? Um, can I remove it? Can I reorder it? Uh, that lets me start to understand how to, how to make things faster. So yeah, that's kind of I like to look at the dev tools open and close because it is multi-process, multi-threaded. You can see this nice exchange of messages happening and things working in parallel, things coordinating. So 
you can get a sense that making things faster means running fewer things, running things more in parallel, um, doing less work, making the work that happens faster. Um, so it's it's kind of a nice way to get oriented in how to start to like read a profile and get to understand it and get oriented in, in the profiler because there is, I mean, if you load it, this first load is um, kind of complicated and, and, and confusing. So what I'll do to kind of wrap up is let's say I've identified this, this, this gap here and I want to file a bug on it. What I, what I would do, actually let's zoom back out so I get, make sure I'm fully oriented and have everything kind of a clean slate. Because th these filters, they build up, they, you can get confused about why your data is not there. So let's say I want to file a bug about this. What I can say, what I can do to, to actually file it to make it more actionable and work with others is I could zoom in here and then click this upload button. And this is on a kind of a clean nightly install. So I don't really care about any personal information being included, uh, but I could exclude some of this information if I'm concerned about URLs that are in the background and things like that. Um, I don't, so I'll click upload. And at the end of the upload, I will get a nice URL that will take me to this profile and I can share it with others. And if I'm having a dialogue or filing a bug and I have different areas I'm, I'm interested in, maybe there's too much information here so I can, uh, I can look at this specific layout and I can only show this. And I can create a new permalink, it's nice and short, share that and say, hey, here's this layout, check it out, there's an issue here. Um, or you can go back out and do multiple shares. A lot of times if I'm in a chat application, I will chat out links to myself or a team just so I can go back to them later and find the things that I've been talking about so I can find and diagnose any issues uh, that I have with, with the profile. And that, that, that uploaded profile will be available for other team members to, to look at. Yeah, so um, I'll try and include any links down below about anything that's relevant. And uh, thanks for taking the time to learn more about the profiler with me.